Hi everyone, so we're going to continue on our discussion of the basic terms and definitions in thermodynamics and thermochemistry. Earlier we were talking about kinetic energy, potential energy, how to calculate it, that's uh, and the definition of energy. Now the second thing that's really important and you know just kind of some basic uh, knowledge about energy is this uh, first law of thermodynamics. Okay, now remember that the term law here refers to the scientific law which means that it's something that's been observed many many times over and it's really it's a fact as much of a, a fact as you can have in science okay something that's been observed again and again over periods of hundreds of years um, in this case uh, this first law of thermodynamics another word for it is uh, called the law of conservation of energy and it's probably something you've heard before which is that the total energy content of the universe is constant in other words it doesn't change so the universe has a certain amount of energy and that energy has not changed since the beginning of the universe uh, an alternative way of phrasing this uh, law is probably the ones that you've heard before which is that energy is neither created nor destroyed in a particular process and that comes straight from this statement of the law itself right if the energy content of the universe cannot change that means that if you have a process let's say you uh, throw a ball up okay uh, so you think that you're putting energy into the ball in order to throw it up so is energy uh, are you destroying the energy because you're, you you know you've lost uh, some energy in that case but it's really not because if you're looking from the perspective of you it's true you lose some energy but the ball gains some energy so overall the content of the energy of the universe remains exactly the same before and after you throw that ball okay so that's kind of the idea of, of the first law here uh, another another way to look at it of course based on the example that I just talked about is that energy basically cannot be destroyed but it could be converted okay so you can convert or you can change energy from one form to another for example from kinetic energy to potential energy or vice versa potential energy to kinetic energy or from one type to another uh, from chemical to electrical for example like in the case of a battery uh, if you're using a battery you're really converting the energy of a chemical reaction in the battery uh, to electrical energy it, when you're recharging the battery you're really converting the electrical energy from your outlet to uh, making that chemical reaction go a certain way okay now let's talk a little bit about the potential kinetic energy conversion because that's really visually easy to to see in in this animation that I'm gonna show you now okay so if you look here this is a, a roller coaster track and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press play here and then the, the the roller coaster is going to stop at different positions now as you can see here when the roller coaster moves uh, obviously there's kinetic energy associated with it so there's a bar here that measures kinetic energy and there's another bar that measures potential energy now remember what we said before the potential energy here is specifically talking about gravitational potential energy which means that it's dependent on height right so at this point there's gonna be a lot of potential energy when you get to this point in the track there will be very little potential energy and so on okay so I'm gonna play this and what I want you to pay attention to is this interchange of this bar as the roller coaster is moving. Okay, so I'm going to start, and as you can see here, what happens at the beginning is there's a lot of potential energy. At the top position here, you have maximum potential energy. That's the highest position in the whole track. Okay, now I'm going to continue this. As you can see, when it falls down, the potential energy bar earlier slowly decreases and then the kinetic energy bar slowly increases the reason is because as you go from top to bottom the potential energy goes lower and lower because now you're at the low le lowest level uh, in terms of height so the potential energy is very low but because the uh, that energy cannot be destroyed that potential energy that was all up here is converted to the energy of motion so then the roller coaster is moving really fast as you know from experience when you're riding a roller coaster it's gonna move really fast when it's falling down from the top to the bottom okay and we can again see this as it goes up again here's the roller coaster going to go up again so we expect the potential energy to go up and the kinetic energy to drop down a little bit okay and that's what you see and then you continue here you see another kinetic energy increase and then now we're going to go up so the kinetic energy is going to go uh, lower 
just as you expect in a roller coaster, remember when it's climbing up, usually it's very slow. So the kinetic energy is less because the speed is low. But then the potential energy goes up higher again because you're at a high position. Okay? So you can see that's what's happening. And then it comes back down. Kinetic energy increases again. Okay? And so on and so forth. Um, so the whole idea in this animation is to illustrate that the energy... Um, is always converted from one form to another, but it's never destroyed, it's never created. You have the same amount of energy beginning to end. So the total energy, as I mentioned before, the total energy, which is the sum of these two numbers, is exactly the same. It's just that in certain cases, in certain position, there's more potential energy, there's less kinetic energy, and in some other position, there's more kinetic energy and there's less potential energy. So let's go back to this first law of thermodynamics idea. So we can we just saw that how energy could be converted from one form to another. Uh, it's also possible to uh, transfer energy from what, what we call one system to another system. And the word system here is very broad. It really just means, you know, uh, something that you're looking at. And I'm going to define it in a couple, a couple of slides from now. But... Uh, it really just means that something you're interested in studying the energy of. For example, if you're looking at a, a cup of hot coffee uh, and you're wondering, well, how much energy does that hot cup of coffee has? That's your system in that case. Okay, And let's say you're wondering about the air surrounding that hot cup of coffee. Uh, that's your other system. Okay, So then you have two systems now. You have the hot cup of coffee as one system and you have the air surrounding the hot cup of coffee as another system. And you're just wondering, well, what happens when the hot cup of coffee slowly cools down? Well, in that case, the hot cup of coffee is basically releasing energy, right? Because it's going, uh, it is getting colder and hopefully intuitively you can tell that if something is hot, it has more energy. Something is cold, it has less energy. Um, so the hot cup of coffee, when it's cooling down, it's basically transferring that energy to the surrounding air molecules. So the air particles get more energy. They should uh, be moving a lot faster. The temperature, if you can measure it, would have been a little bit higher before you put the coffee and after the coffee cools down. Okay, So that's uh, another way that energy can be converted. You could convert it from one system to another. When you heat up your food in the microwave, that's an, another example of energy transfer. Energy in this case is being transferred from the microwave to your food, right? Um, and <clears throat> your food gets warmer. Initially, it's cold. Um, so you know that the food is getting, the food item that you put in there is getting energy from the microwave, okay? So this is a really important law, something you want to keep in mind uh, because energy doesn't get created or destroyed, but you can easily change it from one form to another or from one system to another. Okay, so let's now talk about the units of energy. Remember earlier I was saying in the equations that represent kinetic energy and potential energy, I, I said that the mass has to be in kilogram and then the speed has to be in meters per second if it's kinetic energy or if it's potential energy you have that mgh equation and that uh, when multiplied together gives you this unit as well, kilogram meter square per second square. Okay, That unit is the SI unit of energy and it is also called a joule. Okay, so one joule is equal to one kilogram meter square per second square. Okay, that's one unit of energy that you see quite a bit uh, in this class. Another unit of energy you see quite often is something called a calorie with the uh, lowercase c, um, and that is equal to 4.184 joules. Okay, now. What is a calorie? Well, a calorie is an older um, unit, uh, a, a unit that was used a lot more often in the olden days when people uh, started to uh, develop the field of thermodynamics. At that time, people were studying, uh, this was all back in about the 1700s, 1800s or so, and at that time, people were studying steam engines. And basically, the interest at that point was that how can we use steam engines to, you know, move trains and locomotives from one location to another? So engineers uh, and scientists at the time were very interested in the idea of trying to measure how much energy you get if you were to boil uh, water and using that steam generated from the water to move your train from again one location to another. So that calorie unit was invented at the time and as you can see here this is actually the definition of a calorie which is the amount of energy 
that it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Okay, so that's what one calorie is. If you say, I have one calorie of energy, that means you have enough energy to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius, let's say from 19 to 20 degrees or from 20 degrees to 21 degrees. Um, that amount happens to also equal 4.184 joules. Um, so that's why there's that equivalency. Now, a lot of times if you look at the back of uh, your, uh, you know, let's say potato chip back or your, uh, you know, any kind of item, food item, a lot of times at the back it will say you're consuming a certain amount of calorie. That's what we refer to as the nutritional calorie, which has a uh, uppercase C, and it's not the same as the lowercase c. The uppercase c is actually a kilocalorie in terms of this lowercase c. In other words, it's a 1,000 of these little, of these uh, lowercase c's, okay? So it's 1,000 calories, which means that it's 4,184 joules. So when you say you're supposed to eat only, you know, let's say 500 calories a day uh, uh, for a human being, you're really talking about 5,000 of these little calories, which means it's the uh, equivalent of five times, you know, these 4,184 uh, joules, okay? Another way to think about it is, if you remember earlier, we said one calorie, one uh, lowercase calorie is the um, amount of energy needed to raise temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. If we're talking about one of these kilocalorie or one of these nutritional calorie, that's basically the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by what? A thousand degrees, right? Or alternatively, raise the temperature of one kilogram of water, 1,000 grams of water, by one degree Celsius. So you should be able to kind of interconvert that and think about the meaning of, you know, the uh, lowercase calorie, the uppercase calorie, and the joule. Okay, I don't have time to talk about this kilowatt hour, but that yet that's yet another unit that's used to measure energy, specifically consumption of electricity is measured in kilowatt hour usually.